Okay, I want to work through an example from Hess's Law of Heat Summation that's a little more challenging. So if you've seen my other video on Hess's Law for Heat Summation and kind of talking about enthalpy and how we can add together and manipulate chemical reactions, then I worked kind of a simpler example, but I'd like to work one that's a little more challenging, has a little more going on. Uh, it's one of the biggest student beefs, I think, with chemistry professors is that we put things on the board, we do a couple worked examples, and then they have to do them. The real thing, either in homework or an assessment of some sort, and then it's a lot harder feeling. So I wanted to take just one video to work through a more challenging Hess's Law example um, and hopefully walk you through the logic and the problem solving piece to it. Because if you can solve the harder ones, then it makes the easier ones feel that much easier. So um, I have a process here. Remember Hess's Law for heat summation says that we can add together stepwise chemical processes so long as they have the right stuff on the right sides to reach some sort of target reaction. In this case we're looking at this target reaction up here. We're given the following steps. Um, if we manipulate and rearrange these steps in some way, we have to do the same thing to our enthalpies, our energy of the chemical reaction, our delta H. And then we can add together each of these delta H's from the steps that we use to get to that target reaction to solve for the delta H for the target reaction. So that's kind of a summary of what we're doing here and why we're doing it. So my general strategy for doing Hess's Law problems is I like to look at my target reaction and kind of see what are the unique things, what are some things that look kind of out of the ordinary, look at my steps, and kind of look for things that are unique to the steps. What is it about each one that has a specific component in a specific place? And then how is that going to be useful in reaching this target reaction? So let's kind of start with the first one and see what we can intuit or determine. So I have nitrogen monoxide, oxygen, and nitrogen dioxide. Well, first of all, oxygen isn't even in my target reaction, so I'm going to ignore that for now because that's not really useful. Um, it's not going to help me. Um, I have both nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide in this reaction. And if I look at the other ones, I have nitrogen monoxide down here, so we know that when we add together chemical processes, if I have things on the reactant side of one reaction and the product side of the other, then we'll be able to divide them out, right, in the same way that we have variables and math equations on um, opposite sides of the equal sign, we can divide things out, simplify, combine, all that good stuff. So I have the capacity to do that with this guy and this guy, but there's no other place in these other reactions that I'm given where I have a nitrogen dioxide. So I would say that the focus, the key thing I'm going to focus on in number one, the unique thing is my nitrogen dioxide, which needs to be on the reactant side and I need to have three of them, but I only have two. And since I'm not going to get it from any other place, no other reaction has nitrogen dioxide, then I'm have, I'm going to have to flip this reaction so that my products become my reactants, my reactants become my products, and I'm also going to have to multiply this thing by something in order to get this to a 3. So that's not an easy fix, we're going to have to do it by a fraction, so if I multiply this whole thing by 3 halves, then that will get me 3 of these. So now what have I done? I have flipped the reaction, multiplied this by 3 halves, so now my new number 1 is going to be here and I'll try to do it at the bottom so you can see it. So 3NO2 and I'm going to drop my phase symbols here, the little symbols in parentheses just for ease of, there's already a lot of symbols here so we're good. All right so three halves times my two nitrogen monoxides and now I have three halves oxygen which is kind of an ugly amount but we'll see how it goes. Now what I have to do with my delta H is I need to change the sign because I flipped the reaction. So this is the forward reaction. I flipped it so it's now the reverse reaction. So I need to have a positive 116 and I have to multiply it by 3 halves. And so my new delta H is going to be positive 174 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so... So far, so good. I've got three nitrogen dioxide on my reactant side. 
that's going to fulfill this. So that's a good start. Everything else we can kind of sort out and we'll figure out as we go, but that's a good start. At least it's getting some of the plate pieces in the right places. Okay, let's look at the second reaction and kind of see what is it unique about this second reaction? How does it get me to this target again? So um, there's two things actually. There's the water here. So we know that we need water on my reactant side. And there's the nitric acid. So I have four nitric acid as a product. I know I need to have nitric acid as a product there. So the water and the nitric acid are kind of the keys to this one. Because I don't have nitrogen in my target reaction. And again, like in the first one, we don't have the oxygen. So these guys are just going to be spectators in all of this. We're going to be able to divide them out. So I'm just not going to worry about those. I'm just going to try to focus on the ones that I know that I need for my target and hope things sort themselves out. So um, if I'm looking at the two unique things, water needs to be one water, but I have two. Nitric acid, uh, I have four of them, but I need to have two. So um, it looks like a simple way to do this would be to multiply by one half or to divide by two. And I can keep them on the sides that they are. I don't have to flip this reaction because I already have water as a reactant and nitric acid as a product. So my new number two then is going to be uh, nitrogen. And again, I'm just going to kind of ditch my phase symbols here for ease. Plus my water gives me two of my nitric acids. And again, I have to do the same thing with my delta H here. I keep the sign the same because I didn't do anything in terms of rearrangement. All I have to do is multiply by one half or divide by two, however you want to think about it. And that gives me a delta H of negative 128 kilojoules per mole. All right. Now let's kind of look at where we're at here. This is good, right? If we're kind of comparing this to our target reaction, we needed this on the product side. We needed our water. On the reactant side up here good uh, we have the three nitrogen dioxide on the reactant side so that's taken care of so it looks like really my problem area for this reaction compared to what I have is this nitrogen monoxide so that's going to be what we have to do with the third reaction so currently with the way that I've rearranged and reorganized my other two reactions I have three nitrogen monoxides on my product side so in order to get just one on my product side, which is what I need in the target. Then I need to get two of my nitrogen monoxides on my reactant side in order to divide those out when we add them together. So I need to flip this guy. Flip. And let's try that and see where that gets us in terms of the other things. So when I flip it, then I end up with two of my nitrogen monoxides giving me nitrogen and O2. And all I have to do to my delta H is to change the sign. Kilojoules per mole. Now one of the things that I really like about these Hess's Law problems, um, there's actually a lot of things that I like about them. I think they're kind of fun. They're like logic problems. You can kind of, you know, logic your way through things, which is sort of fun. And you can always check your work. So it's a good opportunity then to say okay well I've messed with this thing so let's just see where I'm at let's add these things together and see if I've reached my target reaction I think that I manipulated them so that they all work out but let's make sure that that's actually the case so when I add these together I'm going to put together everything on my reactant side which is my 3NO2 my nitrogen my five halves oxygen my water and my two nitrogen monoxides. So all five of these guys are on my reactant side, and now I do the same thing with my products. I have three of my NO, plus three halves of my O2, plus two of my nitric acid, plus N2, plus O2. So there's kind of a lot going on there, <laughs> but yes. Okay, so now we need to kind of see what we can combine and get rid of. Combine and simplify some things. So we have uh, two of our nitrogen monoxides here and three on this side. So what I can do is just get rid of these, leaving me with one, and I can get rid of those. Now I can say, well, I have one nitrogen on this side, so I'm going to get rid of the nitrogen on this side. Now I have some oxygens on both sides. I have five halves on this side, and then I have three halves 
and an oxygen here. So one of the ways that I can do this is I need to get, you know, common denominators for my fractions. So I could think about this oxygen, it's one, but I could think about it as two halves. And if I add together my two halves with my three halves, that gives me five halves oxygen, right? So then that gets rid of all of these guys. It's the nice thing about these types of problems. If you set them up right and you focus on the weird ones, then what you have left over tends to be um, tends to be what you're looking for. So now that we're combining and simplifying, we got rid of all these other ones. Then we can just kind of say, well, this is what I ended up with. Three nitrogen dioxide, water gives me one NO plus two of my nitric acids. Okay, so my setup gave me this. And then I kind of go back and check my target again, because we want to make sure that this is what we were actually looking for. Three NO2, water, two nitric, and one nitrogen monoxide, good. So I got the reaction that I wanted, so now I need to make sure that I calculate my delta H. So all I'm gonna do is sum together the three that I manipulated, and that will give me a final delta H. So when I take the 174 and I subtract um, 128 and subtract the 183, or you know, add them all together, then I'm gonna end up with, if I'm kind of doing a back of the envelope calculation, I can see that this is gonna be negative. So I know this process is exothermic, and when I plug them into my calculator, then I get 137 kilojoules per mole of energy released. So we would say that this process is exothermic, right? So it's a delta H that's negative. Heat is being evolved from the system into the surroundings when we form nitric acid like this. So that's just kind of a trickier one. It takes a little more steps. It has few, a few more um, stepwise processes. You had to do more to them. You had these weird fractional things that you had to do. So all of that kind of goes into making these a little more challenging. And students traditionally don't love Hess's Law problems as much as I do. So I just wanted to sit with one that was a little more challenging, walk you through the problem solving logic, and hopefully this will help you when you're doing these problems on your own. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon.